Amen. It's great to have everyone here. Believe in God that we'll be moved from glory to glory. God bless you. Please be seated. You are the Lord and that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God. Father, we speak peace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's, an, it's okay. Now, now, the last week we were talking about our teaching on success. Hallelujah. And I'm sure by now we all know that money, having money isn't success. Amen. And I'm also sure by now we understand that everyone has been created to be successful. However, not everyone will pay the price. Is someone listening to me? God created man in his image. If God is successful, then automatically you can and should choose to be successful. Hallelujah. And success is not the, you amassing a lot of houses. It is, it is good. It is a byproduct. But success is entirely different when it comes to God and his definition, hallelujah. God defines success based on the seed. He has given you and your ability to apply the seed. Amen. Your ability to use what God has given you. So that what God has given you becomes a blessing to you. For others to be blessed. Hallelujah. Possibly your assignment in life is only to one person. Your ability to help the individual. Your ability to convert that soul. Your ability to pay the school fees of that young man who probably would have been lost in life. But because of your generosity now becomes a somebody in life. Hallelujah. I told you money is a byproduct of success. And you can have all the money in the world and still not be successful. One person tweeted and said that uh, some people are so poor, all they have is money. He said some people are so poor, mom, that all they have is money. Hallelujah. The reality, however, is that if you live in this world, people begin to measure your success in life based on how much you have. We all need money, isn't it? We need money. Money was what brought you here. He said, how? Your, your petrol, amen? The car, the bus, the dress, everything that is on you came as a result of money. But then uh, the challenge, however, is that if we are not careful, we begin to elevate money above the processes which God has put in place for us to follow in order to be blessed. Am I helping somebody? And so we talked about the seed. How many remember the seed? That your path, the journey unto being successful begins with your recognition of the seed God has freely given you. You don't have to pay for it. Can you imagine? God decided to bless you. He looked at you, created you in his image. And then he breathed himself into you and commanded. You see, when God said multiply, be fruitful, uh, have dominion, it was a commandment. God gave to man because that is exactly what God does. And God cannot create anything that does anything different. The time Adam decided to behave differently from the set norms, God came in with judgment. Adam was given all the power and all the authority. And the enemy came and said, oh, God is lying to you. He knows the very day you eat, your eyes will be opened. I, I often tell people sometimes it is better when you are blind to some things. Hello? It is better sometimes when you are blind to some things. It saves you. It saves you. Sometimes knowing too much too is trouble. <laughs> One of the challenges of created people is, is, is that their minds often go before the word of God. Any creative person has a challenge with the way their mind works. Gifted people have the same issue. From day one, they are set apart because they are gifted. And so people begin to treat them differently from the rest. You look at these so-called celebrities, look at their lifestyles. Sometimes you sit down and wonder, you have all the money. Why that? Amen. 
And so we talked about your ability to apply the seed so that the seed will be a blessing to you. You know, the reason why I love, I love going back is because I know some of you write in your hands. And going back, refer it also helps us catch up. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we, we got to understanding the uniqueness of who you are, the uniqueness of your seed. And so Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says that we, we ought not to think above that which God has given us the capacity and the ability to think. Every man ought to think within that said limit of God for their lives. Because anytime you begin to think above that, it is tantamount to, I saw tantamount on, on their, their, their page, the choristers, and somebody said, uh, Benjamin, please, light English. I think the word tantamount was too heavy for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it is equal to arrogance and God and pride. It is equal to arrogance and pride. And the Bible said God resist. Resist. God resist the proud. Hallelujah. But the humble, he does what? He lifts up. It said in Job 22 verse 29, when all men are cast down, then you shall say there's a lifting up because God will have, he will show mercy to the humble. And we also came to understand that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. A measure of faith. Everybody sitting here has a measure of gift that can turn their lives around without sweat. I keep saying many of us are so gifted yet we will wake up in the morning and grumble and curse and question God. Why am I struggling to go for that cleaning which you don't like when the gift which God has freely given to you lies dormant. And nobody has been successful in this world aside their gift, idea, talent. No one. Anyone we hail in this world became who they are based on the gift or the seed God has given to them. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself. The prodigal son said to himself. There comes a point in your life that you have to sit down and begin to talk to yourself. Immediately the woman with the issue of blood said to herself, heaven gave her the revelation she needed. Heaven imparted boldness. She stood at this strategic place. You know that Jesus was passing this way. He's passing this way right now. Now, uh, 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 the, the doctor is here. And uh, nurses are here. They will tell you when a person should lose blood for 12 years. 12 years consistently. They don't have any more strength. But when heaven releases the boldness. Ah, somebody needs boldness from heaven. Because you see you've been marking time too much. Every year you postpone the breakthrough. Every day you're postponing it. But it takes boldness from heaven. To move even the most frail person. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. But when it was time for her to possess a miracle. Nothing could stop her. Listen to me. I see somebody walking in boldness. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Has the power and the ability to stop you. Because this time you're recognizing your seed. You're working with your seed. Heaven is giving you an idea. And strategically you will possess that which God has destined for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so you are uniquely blessed. And oftentimes, uh, I, I heard a word this week, myth thinking, myth thinking. When you, you begin to think, if Sister A has done it, then I can do it. No, that is myth thinking. She did it based on her recognition of what God has blessed her with. Are you listening to me? Nobody gets to the finishing line and questions how they got there. Success is intentional. Hello? Success is intentional. And the intent will cost you everything that is about you. But you see, the beauty of pursuing that which God has blessed you with is that you never get tired.
tired because the Bible said those who appear before God in Zion, they move, they don't stay, they move from strength to strength and they go through the valley of Baca and as they go through that valley because of the anointing on them, they turn the valley into a place of water. Ha, ha, ha. Somebody is receiving divine strength. I know you are tired sometimes. I know sometimes you want to give up. But if you have the strength of God, it doesn't matter where you are located. Uh, there's going to be a turn around. I said there's going to be a turn around. For how can it be that John the Baptist will be in the desert and speak for men from the city? They left the comfort of the city to come to the desert. Somebody needs to recognize their seed. Your seed will bring you the help that you need now we move from servants to possessors how many remember Matthew 25 verse 13 now I want us to go to Matthew chapter 25 verse 13 today I want to talk about exposure because when you have the gift when you have the seed I said when we started many years ago that's about 19 and we thought overnight we're going to break through I have come to understand that Premature exposure is dangerous. It is dangerous. Hello? I can prove that in the scriptures to you. Premature exposure is dangerous. You have the seed. Everybody knows. But since you did not give the seed to yourself, ought you not go back to the one that seeded you and ask for the instructions concerning because you see the bible says in ecclesiastics that there's a time oh shout there's a time oh shout there's a time and the bible says that there's a time for everything under the sun we, we haven't yet moved to mars we are under the sun and every season comes with its purpose when we were growing up a few years it was the, the, the richest man was michael jackson in music how many remember that at some point it shifted you're not seeing it. You see, whenever God blesses you, it is a strategy that God, you and God have, have to, have, 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 have God has planned concerning your life. Because mu money used to be in music. Then money shifted. Amen. Then it came to computers, isn't it? Don't you believe the money will shift again? We are so, you see, we get so fixated with that what has no longevity. If, if you look at life and the way things happen, it was in music. Then suddenly it shifted. It came into computers. I know not what the next shift, who and who and where, but I know that there's going to be a shift. And maybe your gift will be the strategic seed the world needs in order for you to embrace the shift. I was talking about the Kairos moment the other day. That there's Kronos. Kronos is from now through to eternity. Nobody stops Kronos. We didn't, we came to meet Kronos, hallelujah. But in Kronos are some dots, which we call the Kairos moment. Kairos moment are times and seasons God has destined for a person's manifestation. And so if, you, if you're sensitive to the way God does things, as you pray, you can't lose faith because in prayer, you are preparing yourself for your Kairos moment. Is someone get where I'm coming from? And as you prepare yourself for your Kairos moment, when it gets to your Kairos moment, you don't need to blink, you don't need to flinch, it just happens because heaven has mandated that it is your time. Somebody is getting into their time. Somebody is embracing their Kairos moment. Somebody who's been praying, been fasting, been crying out unto God, I see your Kairos moment happening without your sweat in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bring us deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's go to and so under seven to possess you, we had separation, then we had training. Talking about the fact that listen, your gift is not enough until you attach a skill to your gift. Amen. And we define talent, we define potential, we define ability. But of all of them, we recognize that skill is very important. Potential is still potential. It is latent energy that is dormant. 
Hallelujah. Latent ability that is dormant. Nobody celebrates ideas. In this world, nobody celebrates ideas. People celebrate the byproduct of ideas. So you see, stop bothering us. So I have this idea. If you have it, do it. Amen. Every year you write down an idea. Every year, nobody, ideas don't get up in the morning and go and work themselves. So for those of us who have ideas, you have two options. Either you stop bothering us and stop bothering God with prayer. God, I have this idea. Uh, you have it. Go. Do it. Hallelujah. As long as you have it, go and do it. Nobody celebrates enough. I, 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 as a pastor, you get, you get to a point where in life you are tired of your church members and the ideas. Oh, yes. Pastor, I have this idea. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, help them get that idea. The idea that there's no battery to connect the microphone. I get tired. Eh? Every Sunday, ho, po, 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 po. the microphone is speaking tongues. What is this? Hallelujah. Oh, may the Lord bring us deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. So nobody celebrates ideas. Then we, we, we talked about and, uh, and the training, you need to recognize your potential talent, skills, and ability. Tonight, uh, in these few minutes, I want to talk about exposure. Hallelujah. Because I've just realized that the fact that you have the gift, amen, also comes with the reality of the timing of its exposure. Hallelujah. Are, are, you, are, you, are you getting me? Now, Habakkuk chapter 2 says, write the vision. So there's one that writes. Hallelujah. The he that reads it. So there's the other that reads it. Might run with it. So there's one that runs with it. Now in business, there are three classes of people. There is the capitalizer. Amen. No, there's the creator. There's the capitalizer. And there's the consolidator. Hallelujah. Somebody comes with the idea. Another funds the idea. And there's this one who comes in to make sure the idea works. Amen. So he that reads it right, there's maybe your assignment in life is just to be a writer. You see, we watch movies, isn't it? Everybody, we watch movies and we love it. But we seldom recognize the people that wrote the movie are equally rich or blessed as those who acted on what they wrote. He that reads it might run with it. Your duty maybe is to write the vision. Somebody's duty is maybe to read it. Another person's duty is maybe to run with it. Every one of them has a set time. God has destined for their manifestation. Hallelujah. That's the reason why sometimes, in, and not sometimes, in life, everybody needs a mentor. Somebody who will guide you and guard you. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27. Proverbs 24, verse 27. Prepare thy work without. Now, underline the word without. We are talking about exposure in relation to success. The timing, the timing. Timing is very, very important. You can have the world's greatest gift, but if your timing is wrong, your timing is wrong, every Everything, every endeavor, every, uh, every uh, uh, ability, every time you spend in bringing the gift to a certain point will be wasted. Timing is everything. Hallelujah. Timing in life is everything. As a prophet of God, sometimes I'll be praying and God reveals things. And I ask God, do I go and tell the person? said, no, wait. When I'm ready, I will announce. Are, are you getting me? Timing is everything in life. Amen. Timing. In the beginning, nobody knows when the beginning began. But as long as God said there was a beginning, there was timing. Hallelujah. Proverbs 24 said, prepare your, thy work without and make it fit for thyself. Make it fit. If you cook and you taste it and you don't like it, how do you expect the next person to like what you've cooked? 
Hallelujah. Are you, are you getting where I'm coming from? He said, prepare thy work without, without, in secrecy, in quietness. And make it fit for thyself in the field. And afterwards, expose the work. Build thine work. Build thy, 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 build thine house. Hallelujah. Now understand number one, the fact that you are chosen does not mean you are enthroned. The fact that you have the seed does not mean your seed will automatically produce. The fact that you are anointed does not mean that is the time of your manifestation. And that is the challenge with this generation. Sometimes God blesses you not with the fruit, but he blesses you with the seed. And because we are so used to munching and eating, that which is often a seed is often treated as a fruit. David was anointed a king when he was about 17. Anointed a king, but there was a king in place. And by the time they anointed David king in Hebron or in Judah, he was about 40 years. Now tell me, 17 and 40. 17 and 40. He was chosen all right, but it wasn't the time for his enthronement. Patience, they say, is a virtue. Impatience, too, is a virtue. One builds a man over years and over time and, and makes sure that their work is ready and fit for themselves. One prepares an individual in secrecy. One prepares a person and, and, and empowers them to deal with certain things in secrecy before God exposes them. The other makes them believe they are ready. And I've seen many people who have gone before God and I've crashed funny when they crashed they couldn't get up again hmm? there's a spirit that lures a mature gifted seeded people into oblivion and many of us are caught in its trap he said prepare your work without nobody needs to know what you're doing in secrecy Nobody needs to know the training you are going through in secrecy. Nobody needs to know the fast and the prayers. How, what you're writing, the notes you're putting down. Nobody needs to know. He says, without, without. Do not announce when it's not yet time. Keep quiet about it. Don't tell anyone. When the angel came to Mary and announced, the Bible said when Mary heard these things, she, kept, she thought of what kind of salutation is this. And the Bible said she kept it in her heart. Even the brethren of Jesus was kept in secrecy until God was ready. Hello. You see, it is critical to understand that exposure, exposure is everything if you're going to excel. If you're going to excel. If you're going to make it. You can have the gift. You can be very anointed. You can sing for the house to turn around. But until God is ready to show God gave you the gift so he knows how and when and who and what and what to do and where to take you until the day God is ready in secrecy prepare your work without let nobody bother you and expose you prematurely even in childbirth any child that comes prematurely is put on machines hallelujah because there are certain principle laws which applies to a person and their seed. Amen. In Luke chapter 1 verse 80. Let's go to Luke chapter 1 verse 80. Hello. Our uncle's scripture is Matthew 25 verse 13. Please. We will go there. Luke chapter 1 verse 80. Luke chapter 1 verse 80. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. And was without. The child was without. Nobody knew there was a prophet called John the Baptist. Why? God had bypassed the traditional priesthood. He was tired of the traditional ways by which they wanted to disseminate his word. Tired. So God raised his own prophet. The guy was an unusual prophet. 
I wonder when somebody says, I, 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 one, I was talking to one guy, he said, he's a prophet. And that guy could eat and eat and eat and eat. So I said, what kind of prophet are you? Prophets don't, are not supposed to eat too much. <laughs> The guy can eat and eat and eat and he says that it's in the belly. He will give it out. Hallelujah. If I begin to list certain things prophets are not supposed to do. Uh, uh, I don't like going to funerals because we are not supposed to go. We are spiritual Nazarites. Hallelujah. Okay. I'll tell you about the vow of the Nazarite. So some of us, uh, uh, not you, not you, not you. I was going to say something. People start beating me up. If anybody dies and I don't go to look at their body, I don't look at bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't. Maka, maka. And, in, and it was in the desert. That the child was where? Repeat after me. The child was where? Until the day of his what? Until the day of his what? So you see, <laughs> you can have the gift. You can have the seed. I told you when I was 19, I thought, oh, by now I was flowing 20, 20, 21, 22, 24, ah, 25. Nothing is happening. 30, nothing is happening. 31, God, uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> 35, nothing is happening. 36, then the waters were being what? Stead. It was only after I married that succulent lady that I understood the power of exposure. But in between... When I was called, I was ordained when I was about 20, 22. From that time through to now, watch this. I was tempted severally, severally, severally to expose myself. Anything that is not well formed gets crushed at its exposure. You see, many of these churches are 41 days fasting and the graphics and flyers all around. It means nothing. It means nothing. Flyers don't grow a church. Huh? When God is not ready, hmm, you can spend all your money. I know <laughs> Pastor Suku and borrow money for uh, their revivals. And afterwards, the money, they, they are being hooked. Uh, give us our money. Give us our money. And, 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 and it's all because people want to expose themselves. Before their time, you see, one, one of the, is, is, is the thing is that when God is ready, you don't sweat. Please listen. When God is ready, everything is also ready. And so you see, you just need to command and things come to place. When God is not ready, you force things into being. And I tell you, anything that is exposed prematurely gets crushed. Jesus, when he was 12 years, he was already God. The God nature in him one day took him into the temple. The Bible said he began arguing with him were the leaders and they were confounded and the parents had left please listen when they came back they said what are you doing i said don't you know i have to be about my father's business it was too early he wasn't ready and so guess what the bible said the parents took him blessing young of you they took him home and the bible said he was subject he was what subject unto them unto them now watch this. When he became subject unto them in Luke chapter 2. I want to show you some secrets. Let's go to Luke chapter 2 verse 51. He was subject unto them. And because he now understood the power of exposure and timing. The Bible said he grew in favor. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said and, 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 and he did what? And he went down with them. And came to Nazareth and he was subject, subject unto his parents. They took him off the grips of premature exposure. Hallelujah. And then began to retrain him, take him through the processes of what exposure is. And because he was subject unto them, guess what happened? Number one, he began to grow in wisdom and stature. And in favor with who? And with who? With God and with man, he was subject. The parents understood the power of premature exposure and the right timing of exposure. And so they took him away. Yes, you are God. We understand what you do. We know that you came in the stead of God. But it's not yet the time. Come. They took him away and the Bible said he was subject unto them. Am I helping somebody? He was subject unto them. 
And because he was subject unto them, had patience, patience enough, he began to exhibit some characters. He began to exhibit some supernatural flow. He began to grow. You see, your seed shouldn't remain the same size you started with if you allow for God's time in. Ah, am I helping somebody? Is someone learning? This? You see, you, 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 your gift should not remain the same as you started with if you will be subject to the right teaching, the right time in. Too many of us. I know a wise man who when he bought his car brand new, we, we will go to some places and I said, are you not taking your car with us? He said, no, let's get on the taxi. I didn't understand those things until I came to understand that. Huh, many people don't like it when it's your timing of exposure. Are you listening to me? And, and, and it's wise not to expose certain things to certain people. Hello? Uh-huh. I know what Ghanaians want. Now you, you think I'm talking about witches, isn't it? So he says, he says, don't expose certain things to certain people. Say, Amen. Wave if you're here and let me know you're here. Hallelujah. I said, he was subject unto them. The parents taught Jesus what the right time of exposure is. Amen. You're anointed. No dispute about that. But the fact that you're anointed does not mean it's your time. Your day will come. Today is my day. Let me enjoy my day. Don't cram my style. Are you, are, you, are you listening to me? Because in life, only one person is crowned per time. Only one person is crowned per time. Two people cannot be crowned the same time. Hallelujah. And woe unto you if you don't have the ability to defend that exposure. The enemy just watched it. The parents knew what the devil could do. So they, they just snatched him away. The right timing. Are you rushing? Are you doing some things your parents are telling you? It's not yet time. Hmm? Are you moving in a direction your pastor is telling you? Please, it's not yet time. Are you behaving in a way which is contrary to the set plan of God for your life? That you're being told, please. It's not yet time. Outside the walls of God's protective. You see, the prodigal son thought he was ready. Give me what pretended to me when you die. Yeah, I know when you die, you will give me some things. But I want it now. The dad said, hey, hey. He said, I want it now. You see, from give me, I told you the other day, when he came back, he begged. He said, make me. You're not getting the revelation. Listen, when he was going so full of arrogance, in his arrogance, he said, give me. The dad knew it wasn't time. And when it's not yet time, guess what happened? You take what, if, what could have been and you go and waste it. Because the Bible said he took so much and wasted. And sometimes if you're not careful, you might never rise again. And the other day, we're talking about something when, when a bishop confirmed it. He said, hey, you can still be in and God would have taken his hands off you. So you are there, but nobody cares. Are you seeing it? You are doing everything you have to do, but nobody is patronizing what you're doing. I learned one thing. If you will forget it, please remember, nobody loses the anointing but the credibility. Attached to your seed. You can lose it. Why? Because it wasn't the time. Hello? You might not lose your seed. But the significance of your seed. You lose it. When you try and expose yourself. Before the right time. Am I helping somebody? So you see. In, in order to be successful. Understand the Power of timing. Now in exposing, learning how to expose. Let's go to Matthew 25 verse uh, 14. There are three words I want you to look at. Number one, he said he gave one five and he traded. Hallelujah. The other gained and the other buried. 
what he was given. In order to understand exposure and the right timing of God, understand that when the king gave gifts to them, he had taught them how to trade, how to gain, but never taught them how to bury their gifts. Hallelujah. He had taught them how to trade, how to gain, but he had never taught them how to bury their gifts. Two chose to obey the principle of trading. What is trading? The exchange of goods and what? Services. Whatever you know down will grow only by exchanging the ideas. Uh, uh, by learning of other people. Uh, 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 are you listening to me? By learning of other people. This is what I know. This is what I want to become. What can I learn of this individual? When the prophet's wife went to Elijah, Elijah said, I know how you can possess your miracle he said how he said go and borrow many vessels the woman with a small bottle of oil representing her seed he said what you have at home he said i have only a bottle a bottle a, a i have only a small oil in my bottle he said i know how that oil can multiply number one go and borrow many vessels in trading you don't trade a few you reach out so deep because wisdom is given to other people concerning what you want whatever you want to become somebody has already been been there done that they have the wisdom are you listening to me the woman went and borrowed as many as she could. And I like what the Bible said. The oil seized the day there wasn't any vessel. In life, you don't stop learning. Hello? Concerning your chosen field. I said to the lady at the time, don't bother yourself with what others are doing. Bother yourself with what God has called you to do. You want to be successful? Yes. If you get confused with other people's stuff, then definitely you and success will be too far off. The woman went and borrowed as many vessels. Remember, she had a seed, but how to expose the seed was lacking. And so the prophet said, I know how to do it. Go and borrow many, many, many vessels. And when you come, close your door. Too many of us are the type that always want to follow the crowd. This is what Sister A is doing, so let me do it. Hallelujah. There's a story of a young woman who got married and whenever she would fry her bacon, she would cut the edges. And the husband used to love the edges. The guy was raised to love the edges. Anytime she would fry bacon, she would cut the edges. So one day, the young man met the mother-in-law and said, Mother, something is going on in my house. I don't understand it. Nanaya is frying the bacon and cutting the edges. Hallelujah. So you have to explain how. I said, I don't know how, but my mother used to fry the bacon and we also cut the edges. So the mother picked it off her mother. So the young man followed after, went after the mother-in-law's, what's that? Grandmother-in-law. Then asked the grandmother-in-law, why is it that your daughter and her daughter, who's my wife, will fry bacon and cut the edges? She said, because in my days, the frying pan was so small. Many of us love following the crowd. But in 2 Kings chapter 4, when the woman met the prophet, he said, when you, had, when you, have, when you have borrowed vessels, close your door. It's one of the reasons why I, I, I exude confidence in everything I do. I'm not bothered by the next persons. I bless God for their life. You can come here and raise the dead person. It is your portion. It's got nothing to do with mine. I shouldn't be intimidated by what the next person does. I should be so focused and be thankful for what God has done. You see, the reason why many of us rush ahead of our time. Somebody is building in Ghana, so you want to go and build at all costs. And you're earning 200 pounds from your cleaning, and you're under pressure. The person is building back home and, and you, 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 you have phone calls. Oh, you've been staying in London for quite a long time. What has that got to the person back home? So by now you should have come and uh, you should have come back home and done something. It is your concern as a man will see. You see, and many of us put ourselves. Now, many of us are in debt. Bank loans. And every year you are negotiating a bank loan. Uh, uh, oh, uh, and you're happy. Uh, uh, you see, 
to be a, to, borrowing is a burden borrowing is not a sin many of us would have been free if we had not been borrowing we borrowed not because God told us to hello we borrowed because you saw the next person who came to London five years back you have been in London for about ten years you saw the person that came to London five years doing something you thought you were being delayed in life hey 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 just as we all came differently we all will die differently how do you know the person has only but a few years to live how do you know the evil means by which these individuals acquire their things exposure is important am i helping somebody so he went and traded learned how to expose his gifts his talents by trading it is said that many people after they finish university or formal education don't read again can i announce to you if you're a young person here you don't read you've already lost about 70 percent of your purchasing power readers are leaders i'm not talking about metro oh i'm talking about books that will shape the way you think listen where we come from except and even if you are born here it is the most dangerous thing that ever happens to these young women born here young men, children one part of you says i'm british isn't it another part of you when you go out and you come here this is ghana or nigeria watch this the child was born here but the child is confused because they are torn in between being born here and eating pounded yam or fufu constantly. Are, are you, are you, are you, so so uh, uh, you ask them, where do you come from? Uh, I'm British. What is British? Uh, you see, let's, let's be, what is British? It's either you are English or you are a foreigner. Hello? Because they had to coin a word for all of us to fit in. But the reality is, what is British? <laughs> Am I helping you? So if you don't love reading, I tell you, you've lost about 70% of your purchasing power. Readers are leaders. That is the one way you can trade. Hallelujah learn of other people the other one went and gained the bible says to trade the bible says that in in in, in Isaiah 49 verse 17 i would teach thee how to make wealth is someone getting it and the lord said i will give you pastors after my heart who would teach you so you see in trading you are learning of somebody the person does not need to be closer you can you can be mentored from thousands of miles away and still be blessed in trading if you're going to expose yourself prepare yourself prepare your work without prepare it with, without and make it fit for yourself if you don't like the work break it down fix it Abba. the thing is there are too many lazy drones in the house of God wanting the best of God and are not willing to pay the price nobody becomes great overnight Nobody becomes great because they wish to become great. Nobody becomes great just by showing up in church every Sunday. No, it means nothing. There's work, work, work has got to go into your desire to be great. And until you learn how to pay the price, forget the success you are talking about. Now some people, 24 hours is not enough, including myself. The background we already come from, it is a messed up background. You come from a background of poverty. It doesn't matter whoever was rich or wealthy. Listen, as long as the greater background is debilitating, it affects the way you think. Many of us, where we are coming from, it is a background of struggle and lack. And even when God is bringing us into his best, you're still rejecting it. The other we're having Bible study, and I was talking about three things. Perception, perspective, and uh, purpose. Perception, perspective. And purpose. If your perception is wrong, your perspective is wrong, you will never see your pr purpose come to pass. Perception. How do you perceive yourself? You're only going to change the way you think to think the way God wants you to think by learning how to trade. 
trade. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my inferiority complex. I'm trading my mediocrity. I won't allow certain things to be. So here and here I take. You've heard garbage in, garbage out. No, it's not true. Garbage in gives birth to more garbage. Because your mind, <laughs> garbage in, garbage out. It's not true. How many of us truly take garbage in and let the garbage out? Hello? Is someone learning something? Come on, say, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Say, Lord Jesus, we thank you. And, and someone going to apply what we are learning here. You see, because you own him. The next generation, I look at the younger generation, and I, I'm sorry to say, that I look at some parents, and the way they are raising their kids, you're just raising them to failure. You're just raising them. You see, you, you, you're raising them onto failure. It doesn't matter how many times we pray. Hallelujah. You're raising them onto failure. I say this boldly and confidently. You're raising them onto failure. Not exposing them, not stretching their minds. Getting them caught up in the same cycle, the same things you did that brought you your challenge and your struggle. You know you don't like what you're living. You don't, you don't like the car you're driving. You know you don't like the area, the community. But the very things which you have to do in order to break your children free is the same thing you're stopping them. The same cycle. It's all right. Ghana, they don't have jobs, but in this country, if you finish university, you are sitting in Asda. It's okay. Who said it's okay? My friend, shut up. Stop destroying a generation. The child wants to be a, a medical doctor, sits the exams, does not get the right grades. Oh, it's all right. D do anything. Who said anything is what the child wants to do? Who said anything? Oh, now IT is invoked, so go and do IT. Who said IT is what the Lord? I beg you. And many, many of our generation, many people within our community, they are involved in a cycle of no productivity. We love value. Louis Vuitton, Chinese one, Dubai one. Every designer thing, you, you can meet an individual. I look at these young girls who have given birth. And the buggies they are pushing. And these buggies, when I wanted to go and buy a buggy, the Holy Ghost had to descend. The amount of research that went into buggy and these people are driving buggies they don't have the money for. Wherein a child wears a trainer that costs a hundred pounds and the mother does not earn a hundred pounds within that second. They, they put, you see, when you put the, your card in the machine, see how fast it goes. Now, do you earn that money at, in that instant? Oh, please. We are the only generation who don't know how to save. We save on unnecessary stuff. Hello? We save on the necessary stuff. Hey, Asians understand how to create wealth from generation to generation. You don't want to give your child your money even to help with their dream. You have the money. Your child wants to become somebody. You have the money. You don't want to. Now imagine if your child goes to university and has no need to go for the government money. They finish university, they have no debt. Do you know what that means? They are five years ahead of their peers. You have the money. Oh, go and take money as everyone. Your child is not like everyone, people. Ah. Ah. You have the money. The child does not need government grant. You can afford it. But you are saving and buying African cloth. What are the names? Akosombo Textiles, Holland, Wax, Dumas, Trimax. You are piling them up. You are pi and your child needs that money. He does not need government money. He can go to university without government money, come out, not owing anybody, will be free. Now imagine if you're living life and you're, you're growing in debt. 
Your, pa- your father was in debt. Your mother is in debt. You're living in buy now, pay later. Buy now, pay later. Even the brass. Buy now, pay later. When is that child going to be free, people? Am I speaking the truth? And so, you see, we raise a generation who, who get caught up in a cycle of an ending debt. Not exposed rightly. You spend hours watching African movie. See, 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 look, 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 look. That woman, that woman, eh? That woman. And, 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 and you spend hours, hours. And you don't spend the same amount of hours on the seed God has freely given you. People, this is not Ghana. This is not Nigeria. This in, it's not Africa. This is a place where nobody sleeps. 24 hours, people are working. One person finishes a shift, another does what? This is a place where most law states that every 18 months, information changes. Every 18 months. So you are as good as 18 months. Your purchasing power is as good as 18 months. After 18 months, you're obsolete. You see, the concept is, they, they've inculcated the concept in mobile phones. That's why they don't sign you more than two years. Because right after 18 to two years time, your, your phone starts misbehaving. You're as good as 18, 18 months. So if for the last 18 months, you've not read any book about the gift, the calling, the talent, or what you're doing, the truth is that you don't have enough purchasing power. Hello? And uh, let me just bring it to a closure before I get stoned. Because I have a lot to talk about. Hallelujah. Again, make well. The Bible said, I, the Lord, in Deuteronomy 8.18. <laughs> Let's go to Deuteronomy. I would does, uh, show you how to make wealth. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Okay, we bless God for this opportunity that we have in his presence. Amen. Deuteronomy 8.18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get. Say to get. Not to make. Say to get. And the young man gained. He understood how to get. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, and he gained. How did he gain? By applying the power of getting wealth. He said, I give you power to get. Look at the last one. He went and buried what God has given him. You see, when I was growing up, I used to believe when they said you were lazy. I thought it's because they say go and sweep, you won't sweep. Do this, you no, no, no. The one that went and buried his gift. It's like the type that we meet every day who have this whimsical thinking of uh, wealth coming from somewhere. Hello? It's like the type that always gets themselves into get-rich-quick schemes. Because they believe that wealth is coming overnight. Wealth is not built in a day. Generations. Hallelujah. Remember the time when this program, there was a program, the tier whatever program, and people were pumping their money. Abrofo are good in scamming. Hello? He's the type that is lazy. Hates, you know, every lazy person you meet around hates themselves. They don't want to improve their lives. Hello? They don't want to improve their lives. They can't. They shouldn't. And, and oftentimes they assume that they're, they're, it's, it is somebody's responsibility to, to, to turn their lives around. He went and buried expecting the one that traded, the one that gained to be on the same level. Can I be honest with you? In this earth, we are not all the same. Don't believe it. Even in church, we are not all the same. So you can sit there and oh, Jesus said we shall all be. Did Jesus really say that? Rich men were his friends. Why were rich men his friends? Successful people were his friends. We are not all the same. So, oh, so stop that. Don't, 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 lie. Don't, don't accept that lie that we are all the same. Went and buried everything the king gave him. Hallelujah. I'm done. Lazy people are people who bury their gifts. They lack the foresight to understand that no one is responsible for their well-being. They are full of excuses. 
The underlying factor is that every lazy person is afraid of taking the first step. It is not your portion in the name of Jesus. I said it is not your portion in the name of Jesus. I speak to every gift, every seed, every gift and every seed in this room. And not the sound of my voice to hear the voice of Christ. The same voice that commanded Lazarus to come out of the tomb. And when Lazarus came, when he was bound by dead people's clothes, he said, loose him, let him go. I stand in as the prophet of God and the under shepherd of this house to command that everyone that is bound is loosened in the name of Jesus Christ. Every seed is being on earth in the name of Jesus and every seed will be maximized every opportunity will be maximized everyone that deserves the blessings of God that is working with your seeds your seeds will produce your seeds will produce your seeds will produce your seeds will empower you you will be successful generations will know your name said the generation of the upright shall be blessed I declare blessing over your life in the name of Jesus said the generation of the upright shall be blessed as you embark on this journey to work on your seed not you not you alone but the generations that will come after you they are blessed from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet whatever was standing between you and that blessing today in the name of jesus i bind our spirit i bind our spirit for the bible declares god frustrated the tokens of liars and he make it diviners go mad Whoever has this divine anything against your life is already mad in the name of Jesus. Next week, I will talk about how to sow your seed. Please stand. Now, in the next few minutes, we're almost done. Close your eyes and let me bless you. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Kindly take your offering.